Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 32 of my sort of old world beginner series and this will possibly be the last video in this series because I am very close to winning. I'm on 57 of 60 uh, victory points and I have got two wonders on the build and once those wonders are completed uh, I will win. Unless anybody else beats me to a win, which is unlikely, the AI don't do ambitions and the second closest rival is miles behind me. And uh, I guess the AI could win with a sort of a domination victory, but I don't see that happening in the next uh, sort of 15 turns or so. So, so depending on uh, how long these turns take will dictate whether it happens in this video or the next one. But I'm going to try and rush through them fairly quickly. I don't think there's much more to discover at this point, um, particularly in this game. So I don't really want the turns to take any longer than they need to. As I've said previously, uh, I will do another series after this one and I will go on a higher difficulty level. I will also focus more on the combat side of things. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, one thing that I'm interested to learn is when is a good time for the player to go to war? If you compare it to some things like Civilization, if you pick the wrong time to go to war with the AI, you can get screwed over. An early war is against the AI is usually good because you can attack a city before it has defences. But at higher difficulty levels, that doesn't really work because the AI always starts with a massive army compared to the player. Plus they get bonuses and things, so you know, you literally get screwed over very, very easy. Anyway, um, we've just built the Circus Maximus. Apparently there was another wonder that I had uh, built that I was unaware of. Um, so there's that. So we're, we're now one point away. So this could be a very, very short video. Um, we've still got an ambition to do. It wants us to get um, Bog Kinaro. We can work on that, actually, and complete an ambition. I don't think we need to gain this boost here. So let's just go and work on Bog Minaro. Now remember, that'll be an ambition. It shouldn't be a victory point. Uh, we can give one... I could give one Wisdom to my Chancellor, or I could always give him Discipline or Charisma, because he's already going down that route. So let's go and uh, sort that out for him. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd completely missed that I was building that, that wonder. Uh, we can get Windmills over here. Produce some extra science for a bit of stone. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. So we know for sure that we've got two more wonders in production. The next one is this one, which will be done in seven years. Now, that will give me two victory points. That should be a win. It is also possible that one of my cities might grow in culture level, which would also give me a victory point and therefore pop a win. So it could happen a lot sooner than I expect. Let's quickly just cycle through the workers. I must admit, I have had a lot of fun with this game. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I've tried a lot of games that are similar to this when looking for civilization alternatives and for me a lot of them are alright but they don't scratch that itch and this game does. I've really really enjoyed playing this. It, um, I think it's, it's good enough, it fills the gap, it's different enough but also familiar enough. I'm just trying to find something to do with this worker because at the moment I haven't really got anything to do with him. He's in a city with a lot of sort of desert tiles that he can't really do anything. Let's get him heading down here. Again, it's a, it doesn't really matter because uh, this game is going to be over, I think, reasonably soon, so I don't really want to spend too much time uh, messing around, micromanaging my units at, at this point when things are about to be done. Uh, you could build a stronghold there. Well, there's no reason why not to. Again, let's just sort of skip through these. This is a... I'm not necessarily sure it's a problem. I'm sure pe people very much do enjoy it. But it's something that I find in many games that are like this. Which is you really have to sort of try hard in the early game. To make sure you keep up with the AI. But then once you get to a point where you know you're going to win. You just sort of have this runaway uh sort of lead where you can go okay I don't even need to concentrate on micromanaging now I can just kind of click stuff at random I've got a hundred workers that I just need to keep busy or my cities are constantly telling me they need me to produce something and I don't really need to produce anything so I'm just clicking on random stuff and uh, civilization very much struggles with that and I I've noticed 
particularly particularly at this difficulty level so does old world but i think it's just it's partially down to the way i play and i know at harder difficulty levels you really do have to be more thoughtful about what actions you take you can't just sort of pick something random you really do have to pick the right options otherwise it makes it very very difficult for you it's the same with the interactions with the families actually uh, the character interactions are a nice touch but other than events i've not really dealt with many of them at all uh, i haven't done too much manual manipulation uh, with characters i've just kind of left it to be and uh, again, at this difficulty level, it's been fine. At high difficulty levels, it might be something completely different. Rome gains gladiators. So they'd lose some culture to gain a little bit of training. I think we'll just um, gain the culture, actually. Professional army or volunteers. So we've got a law that we need to pick. Now, neither of these are particularly brilliant. Volunteers, plus 20 training per year when at war. All cities can hurry production with population. Or plus 50% for all XP units during combat. It doesn't, again, doesn't really matter too much right now. Uh, screen went dark there for a second. I really thought it was just about to give me like a you have won kind of thing, but apparently not. So we can get cons conscripts now. Somebody did mention to me that um, a conscript is an upgrade for the militia. So you can upgrade uh, workers to um, militia and you can upgrade militia to conscripts. So we could if we wanted to upgrade them to a slightly better unit. And now we've got a, a bunch of cities that aren't doing anything. So again, is there anything useful that we need to produce? I'm going to say at this point, probably not an awful lot. Again, I, sh I should take a lot of time to go down these lists and go, well, okay, this, this one is the most useful. It's going to provide me with the biggest benefit. But, you know, once again, we're that close to the end of the game now. It hardly seems worthwhile. Let's get the crabs there. Let us get the rancher. And you completed a stone cutter. We can get a wood cutter, I suppose not doing too bad actually in terms of uh, yields they're all coming in quite well you could get a stone cutter so let's end the year there any one of these turns because i haven't got see uh, augusta to um this one here to torinorum uh is almost um legendary five years and that will be the next uh the next level of culture so in five turns we've won Actually, be four turns because the uh, the wonder is being produced more quickly than that. Is that a wonder? No, that's an academy. It's not. It's not the city I thought it was. Um, so yeah, five five turns, and that's assuming that it doesn't speed up via an event or something else going on in between. Uh, governor has died in office. This sounds like a negative. Uh, our adorable court monkey provides very de proves very distracting. Whenever the court convenes, he screeches endlessly until you show him your complete attention. How long must this go on? So lose one discipline or lose one discipline. I cannot focus. Enough monkey business. So interesting that they both have exactly the same negative effect, but one gets rid of the monkey. So why would... Do we want to get rid of the monkey? Is it just going to keep happening until we do? And if it does keep happening until we get rid of the monkey, then why would we ever choose the option not to? I'm going to choose the option not to. Uh, so we need to get a, a new governor down here. Uh, there's a few people that we could use. You're not particularly brilliant. Um, you're all going to have impacts on something. You're just going to have impacts on gold and a little bit of science. I guess that will do for now. And uh, yes, we've got you here. You were going to build stuff, weren't you? We can build a Jewish temple over here. Let's go ahead and start working on that. So are there any cities here that are going to um, pop in the next few turns? 15 years for that one. That one's only just popped as well. That one's only just popped. Uh, this one is five years away. So if you mouse over the little um, trophy, that's 16 years away. If you mouse over the blue bar, you can see how long it's going to be before they level up. I don't think any of them are going to be less than uh, five years this is one that I haven't seen. That's 15 years. This one is, yeah, four years. That's the closest one. So four years, things should pop. Uh, I've got a lot of idle workers again. 
So that's the um, disciple. So he's not idle. Uh, we can go ahead and start getting this. So let's just very quickly cycle through all of these workers. And build a harbour there, I suppose. Sometimes the pop-ups get in the way. The, uh, the um, tool tips. Which is a little bit of a pain. Let's go ahead and get the pasture. So, yeah, desert tiles are pretty useless. I must admit, one thing that I do like in this game with the workers is you do have that little button above them when you click on a specific thing. Uh, you know, the, recommend, the recommended thing for that tile, that you don't have to move to a tile and then go and find it on the list. Uh, again, we've got a worker up here who's kind of like, you're in the desert, there isn't really a lot for you to do. Um, I guess we could sort of move, start moving them up here. There are some uh, things you could do. So let's, yeah, let's get a courthouse. It doesn't really matter at this point. And uh, again, same problem. More workers just with no tiles to improve. So let's start working away up here. Let's get an academy. Sure, why not? How many workers do we have left? Two more. Hamlet. And for the final one, we've also got a lot of cities that are not doing anything. Same issue here again. You were the one that we were bringing down to the capital, though. Let's bring you down here. And then cities. I think a lot of it is because when you're building these specialists, they only take one year, so they get completed really quickly. Let's go and get archives in a couple of places where we can. Let's get some festivals. I'm just clicking on random stuff here, by the way, because I'm at that point where... I, I know that I've pretty much won, so I just want to sort of speed this through. don't really want to waste any, any of your time. Uh, so a little bit off topic, I will be producing a update video for the channel. Hopefully I'll get that done in a couple of days. The idea behind it is I just want to uh, explain about a little bit about the channel, what's going on, um, what my plans for the future are, covering other games and stuff like that. So do keep your eye out for that if that is something that you are interested in. And let's go on to the next year. So, uh, what did I say it was? Three or four turns for this one. Four, four turns for this one. And we are building a couple of wonders. Uh, so, that's a hamlet. Where, where are those wonders that I'm building? I know I started them somewhere. And then I just can't remember where they were. I have noticed that the game does become particularly laggy during the end turn phase uh, in the later game. I guess there's quite a lot going on. It's also nice that you can see how many orders the AI have. It's a good indication of whether or not you're falling really behind. Everyone seems to have around about 50-ish, so that seems good. Uh, apparently my end is near. Uh, we've completed the uh, legacy of Bodkin Arrow. Now our cousin is ill. So there's nothing here that we specifically need to get let's just get coinage it's just a single year so we only have one ambition left to get which is cohorts and martial code uh, i guess what i could have done uh, was in the research go and mark those so we need cohorts which is here and martial code which is there so we just click them it puts that little green dot on them to tell us the tech is targeted so we'll see any prerequisite techs will pop up um, before those, although it's not going to matter too much right now. So, again, a lot of, lot of workers that are just not got an awful lot to do. Uh, I guess you, we could buy this tile, maybe? I mean, we don't need it, but sure, why not? Uh, was that a windmill? Yeah, let's go get another windmill. Windmills are good because they do produce science. So they're a nice, uh, a nice tile to have. And again, we could go over here. I, I don't know if there's a limit to distance, how far away you can buy tiles. Uh, obviously, it has to be adjacent to your border. But unlike something like Civilization, where your borders can only naturally grow uh, up to four tiles away from the city, and you can only work tiles within three tiles of the city, you do seem to be able... And you can only buy tiles within uh, that are in workable range. Because there is no real workable range distance on here, you just seem to be able to keep buying tiles. You could probably work your way right across the map if you wanted to. So it's quite an interesting little thing. Uh, it's it's saying uh, a quarry over there, but again, I think lumber mill, because you know, it makes more sense. So yeah, a lot of cities now that aren't doing an awful lot. Let's get archive. All of these are just going to take one year. 
And the other thing is as well, most of these require something, right? They require civics, or they require... Well, these do that. These are all civics. These are all civics. Building units are training, and civilian units are growth. Later in the game, you are very rarely using civilian units. You've got all the cities that you possibly need, so you're not producing settlers. You've probably upgraded most of the tiles like I have, so you've got an abundance of workers that, that haven't really got tiles to upgrade. There's not much point in scouting unless you're using scouts as agents to set up spy networks in other cities. Disciples, okay, fair enough. You may be using those to convert religions and build temples. Conscripts, you're probably not going to build because why would you? You're just going to build military units. Yes, you could be building specialists, but again, specialists, you're limited by the population you have in each city. And then you've got your city projects. So the vast majority of things that you're going to be building late game are either specialists or projects, and they all use civics. So civics is probably one of the most important late game resources. Because most of the thing, most of the time your city is going to be building something that uses civics rather than anything else. So that is definitely something to keep in mind for future games. That having a good um, amount of civics production later on is really important. Let's go ahead and get that master officer. Uh, I think now I'm just trying to pick some of the ones that uh, are going to take a little bit longer, so that uh, I don't have to keep doing this to every city every single uh, every single turn. Again, we should only be a few turns away from uh, from completion here. And again, I, I will reiterate, this is my first game. So, the very first, uh, not counting the tutorial, the very first game of Old World that I played is this. This will be the first time that I've completed it. I've started other games, I've messed around, I've experimented, I've, I've tried things out. Uh, but this is the first one that I will have played from start to finish. And one of the things that I'm going to be trying, or at least trying to explain in my update video, is uh, my, method my methodology to making videos like this is that um, if I'm trying to provide a tutorial of something, it takes me time to learn before I can teach. And I don't always have the time that I'd like to be able to do that. So sometimes it's easier for me to make content while I'm learning rather than spending weeks learning it and then making a video. I know that's not as easy for you guys to follow but uh, sometimes it's just the option that i have that is a lot of notifications about people that are dying um that's a lot of stuff right there so you can see we've got these notifications in the corner to say that these are both texts um we're gonna miss out on the money here these are both texts that we need as prerequisites uh, to get texts that i need for this ambition uh, i'm not going to bother replacing the governors Again, I've got six workers that are all not doing much. Um, sure, let's get you over here and, and build something. That that wants a garrison. That wants... Um, you know what? We haven't got many ministries. Let's go and build a ministry. Probably a fair few things we can build. Let's get a hamlet. As you can tell, I am pretty much randomly clicking, clicking on stuff at this point. Uh, let's get it. It says a quarry there. There'll be a minor adjacency bonus, so that's fine. I think one thing I will like to try and concentrate on when I start my next game is specialising cities uh, and also trying to do like the AI does, where they just have. Uh, might be, not be able to see them here actually. Uh, but where the AI groups lots of tiles together that are saying like all of their quarries are all clumped together. Uh, well, these are mines. All of their mines are clumped together. All of their quarries are clumped together uh, for massive adjacency bonuses. So that's what I'll be trying to do. Uh, so we've got some... Um, is that us that has died? Yes, we have died. So we're now playing as the daughter. So accept a sizable donation or have... Uh, a favour from Egypt. We'll have the favour from Egypt. Um, let's gain the culture. Not that it makes a lot of difference. And yes, we want to convert to Judaism. And then we've got all the cities that need to do something again. Let's get them doing things like festivals. And You soon burn through your civics when you're doing this. This is the problem. You do archive. 
you can do archive. Archive will give us science. And then just roam left to do. So you can't afford it now. We could sp we could spend... Uh, we don't have enough stone. We could spend uh, gold to do that though. Okay, so let's end the year. How close are we now? I was sure we had another couple of wonders that I was building. That's just a quarry. Hadja Sophia, four, four years. Yeah, the, that city will pop before then. Whichever city it was. This city in two years. So two turns, I should win. So what I might do, uh, as I'm already at the 20 minute mark, is when I get to the next turn, just ignore all of my uh, units and cities and just force it to skip to the next turn, because you can do that. But yeah, I have to say, that now that I've played a game through from start to finish, I have really enjoyed it. I, I love the look of the game, I love the style. Um, if you're wondering about the music, by the way, I know I have the music volume on relatively low. Um... And the music does sound quite repetitive, but that's because I've got the option selected for it not to play copyrighted music, because there is some music that is copywritten, uh, or copyrighted, I suppose, which which um, could potentially get me flagged on YouTube. So uh, it's nice that the developers have provided the option to turn that music off, but that means that we end up uh, listening to the same small number of tracks over and over again. There are far more in the game than you hear in these videos. So I'm not going to bother choosing a new governor. So you can... I, you need to manage idle cities before you can end a turn, unfortunately. You cannot just... Um, you, can, you can skip your units doing stuff, but you do have to uh, manage your idle cities, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. So let's just go and do all festivals where we can. I'm not even bothered where, actually. So now we're on to units. So now we should just be able to uh, force end turn. Which is the little tick button at the end, by the way. Or you can just press number six. These are all number keys. So one, two, three. Uh, sorry. Um, control and Y and Z for that. And then it's one, two, three, four, five, and six across the bottom. So there are shortcut keys for pretty much everything, and I'd highly suggest if you are playing this game and you haven't done so already, go and have a look in the key bindings, because um, there's a lot of interesting and useful shortcut keys. I tend not to use them, because if I'm show trying to show you what I'm doing, it's better for you if you can see what I'm clicking on, rather than me hitting keys that you don't see. Uh, that might be completed, because I've just got like four achievements on Steam. Um, and yes, I can see I'm on 61 of 60, so let's click the button. Uh, I guess all of these doesn't really matter now. Points victory. Your cities are known and admired the world over. People look in, uh, look in awe upon the wonders you have built. The Roman people have proven their worth on the battlefield. Rome will go down in history as the greatest nation of the old world. Congratulations, you have won a points victory by reaching the target number of victory points. And we didn't even have to get right to the end of the time limit. So show me how this came to pass. Opens the timeline so you can view your history. Show me how history will remember these time. Opens the record screen so you can view stats and graphs for your opponents. I'm not done with my story, so we can keep on playing. All my work here is done and exit straight to the main menu. Um, so let's have a click on this. That all felt a little bit anticlimactic. So this is something that you'll very much be familiar with if you've played Civilization. So it's basically just a timeline where we can skip through and see how... I guess you can just sort of... Just hit play. Yeah, and it just plays through. It gives you a nice little game log down here. You can see who all of your... Um, uh, leaders are. You can see uncovering bits of the map. You can even you can toggle the fog on and off, which is nice. So you can actually see what your opponents were up to. So I don't think, at least at this difficulty level, the rate at which I was settling cities... I guess Egypt got off to a bit of a quick start there. And Assyria started settling their... It looks like they've only got three... No, they might have four cities. Actually, it's difficult to tell because the city the city tiles are almost the same colour as the background. They're very hard to differentiate. A little bit easier for Rome. Those purple ones pop a little bit more. But yeah, the, these ones are hard to spot. Um, and the white ones. 
So Carthage was a little bit slow to expand. Uh, Egypt went up really, really quickly there. But yeah, I like you can do that and you can export it as a gift. So that's quite a, a nice little thing to do. Um, let's just close that and have a look at the, uh, the stats. So funnily enough, my rank in wealth was only actually third. Slightly behind Egypt and reasonably behind Persia. Persia were making a lot of money. But in total population and specialists, I was first. I didn't even have the most workers. Yeah, military units. I had the smallest military. Look at Assyria, my closest neighbor. 81. Is that actually units? Yeah. So total units. Um, my total was 24. So I had 24 military units. Assyria had 81. So I'd have been absolutely murdered if I'd have declared war against them. I cleared the most camps. I was second in the most laws adopted and tech discovered, so I'm not even the tech leader. Actually, one behind Egypt, so I was doing reasonably well in terms of tech. Improvements controlled, 350. Egypt was slightly behind at 322. See, Persia had only got one third of the amount of improvements that I had, but more money. So, an interesting thing. And look at Wonders. Wonders is where most of my victory points came from. The only other nation that built any was Assyria and only had two compared to my nine. Uh, and we've also... Can look at some other things here. So, we can, we've got some graphs. So, we can see the military score. My military never really grew. Even in the early game, I was behind the AI. But Assyria and Egypt went hardcore on their military. Territory owned... My territory actually stayed in line with the AI, so I my actual growth was pretty much on target. My exploration was on target. Resource prices very much depends on how much you buy in the settings, so it doesn't ma make any difference. But yeah, my resources, my um, victory points rocketed there, and you can see things like your resource production, so massive amounts of growth all in one spot there. Civics training. Egypt, uh, Assyria had a lot of training, which I'm not surprised given the amount of units that they had. So yeah, everyone seems to go on to like, nothing happens and then it, w w w like turn 100, everything just goes yoink. That can't be right, surely. Something weird going on there that the graph's flatlining. But yeah, it's nice that all that information is there if you want to dig through all that and then we can just say car we could carry on playing if we wanted to or go back to the main menu. But that is an excellent place to stop. I want to thank all of those of you who uh, but, uh, are new to the channel and those of you who have been around for a while for watching the series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've found something uh, useful from it. Thank you if you are one of the people who have been uh, commenting and leaving your tips, your advice and spotting all the things I've missed and stuff like that. It's been very helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope that people have found the vi this video series somewhat useful. I'll see you on the next series and until then, goodbye for now.